Hi, PPT sellers. It's Mike Puchigami. I'm the host of the SEO Keypreneur YouTube community. Super excited today because I am making a high volume, low competition PPT keyword tool. So what I'm looking for is feedback from the people who are watching this video in terms of what you would like to see included in this kind of a tool. A while ago, a TPT seller in the pro community showed me an existing TPT product and they said, hey, can you make something like this? And I looked at the product and it was basically a Google sheet that looked like this, where you could type in a keyword like end of year. And when you hit enter, it would automatically load up the auto suggest keywords from TPT. So if I go to teachers pay teachers and type end of year, it suggests end of the year activities, end of year, end of the year, end of year activities, and end of the year awards. So I didn't think it would be possible to do that with Google Sheets until I saw that someone else had done it. And then once I saw that it could be done, that was proof of concept. And I started thinking, okay, well, if they can do it, I can probably do it too. And that's really the TPT journey, right? We see that some teachers have become millionaires on TPT. And then we start thinking, well, if they can do it, maybe I can do it too. Then we see things on Instagram, like this one from Teacherpreneur Creator Club, where they have a graph about how much money each percentile makes. And if I zoom in, we realize that, hey, only 0.1%, so 139 sellers on TPT are making over $20,000 a month. Sure, we all would love to have 100K income from TPT. This just proves that it's not a get rich quick scheme. But if you're willing to put in the work, and use strategies, apply effort, and optimize what you do, and tinker around a little bit, then eventually maybe you can get there too. So that's the beauty of proof of concept. I started tinkering around with Google Sheets, trying to figure out if I could create a tool like this, where you type a keyword on the left side, and the Google Sheet spits back the trending keywords based on that keyword. Now, full disclosure, this product exists on TPT. I haven't purchased it, but I did watch their video to see what it was. So I don't know if the way that I made my Google Sheet tool is the same way that that TPT seller coach figured out how to do it. There are many ways to bake a cake and the ingredients that I use to bake a cake might be different from the ingredients that you use to bake a cake. And that's the great part of innovation. You see what other people are doing and you start sort of tinkering around and figuring out, okay, well, how could I do this better? And that is exactly what Paula forced me to do yesterday when we were chatting in our Saturday staff room Zoom club. I was super excited and I showed her what I had just made and I searched up phonics because I know that's what her store is about. And it pulled up these keywords and she said, yeah, that's great. But what would make this better for her would be to see how much competition there was for those trending keywords. These are high volume keywords, but there's just so much competition. How do you know which of these keywords to go after? And I thought, okay, we can actually do this because we've already solved that part of the puzzle. If you go to my TPT seller store and you scroll down and find the unlimited TPT SEO keyword search tool, when you download it, you get a PDF file, and you click the force copy link to get your own copy of the Google Sheet. And in this tool, if I type phonics, it'll look up the TPT search result pages for phonics. I can see there are 550,000 products about phonics. I can see that the average number of reviews on that first page is 2,891. I can see here very quickly that the top result has 5,667 reviews. And I can see that the bottom result on that first page has 2,156 reviews. This is a measure of how hard it is to get onto that first page. 550,000 resources, well, you're going to be 550,001. And the number of reviews is a reflection of how much people have bought it. In TPT land, they like to say it's a 10% review rate. It's not. But for simple math, let's say it is. So that means I would need around 20,000 sales to get onto that first page. If I want to see the actual page, I can do that. And I can see there's 5,400 results. I can see there's 5,400 results for phonics. The top result has 5,700 reviews and the bottom product has 2,200 reviews. So it looks like this Google Sheet tool is working pretty well. By the way, if you want this ultimate TPT SEO keyword search tool, don't buy it for $120. Scroll down and get the bundle. The bundle is 10 bucks and it's a growing bundle. 
So once you buy it, you get all of the future stuff that I post on my TPT seller store for free. Now, I don't know when I publish this TPT auto suggest tool, I don't know if it's going to go on my TPT seller store or if it's going to be part of the SEOT Premier Pro membership. And that's because if you watch the live stream with Enrique and I this week, you'll know that there are some ongoing costs every time you look up a keyword. So if there are ongoing costs, it has to be part of a membership. But if there are no ongoing costs, or I charge it high enough that it covers the ongoing costs that I can put it on my TPT store. I haven't really decided how I'm going to do that yet. But anyway, back to yesterday. So I was showing Paula this and she said, this would be more useful if I could see how much competition there was for these trending keywords. So then I started tinkering around and I figured out a way to do that. So if I type here phonics as my seed keyword, it'll pull up the trending keywords from TPT phonics, phonics worksheets, and then right beside it, it's loading in the data from the first search results page. So right away, quickly at a glance, I can see, yeah, phonics has 540,000 results, but phonics crafts has only 14,000 results. That's way more doable. We only have a relative sense of volume right now. So phonics has more search volume than phonics worksheets. It could be one more search or it could be, you know, 100,000 more searches. We don't get a true sense of scale because the trending keywords are just listed in the order of trending of, of searches. You know what I mean? But on this Google sheet, it summarizes the average number of reviews on that first page, how many reviews that first resource has, so 5,667, and how many resources the last resource has, 427. So I was super excited. And if we're talking about innovation, it's this idea about how can we create new things and better solutions and more efficient solutions to life's problems. So Paula told me yesterday what she really would like to be able to do is she knows that she'll never compete at the all grade level stage. But which one is easier, grade one or grade two? Wouldn't it be neat if you could see those side by side? So I made that. I can see here the seed word is phonics. And on the left hand side, it says grade all. So I'm going to change this to grade one, first grade. And it's pulling up the results for first grade. She mentioned she wanted to compare that with second grade. So let's change this to second grade. Now I can see which grade has more competition. So this column with number of competitors for the first grade and this column with the number of competitors with the second grade, they're color coded. The lowest numbers show up in green. And I can see between these two sides, 5,900 competitors is the lowest number. So second grade phonics crafts would be better for me to try to rank for it than first grade phonics crafts. Blue is good. And the trending keyword with the lowest number of average reviews is 124. And that's at the second grade level. Neat, right? If you would like this kind of a tool, can you give this video a thumbs up? I'm at the point of my business right now where I have to pivot and decide where I spend my time. Do I spend the bulk of my time on my TPT store creating social emotional learning resources for middle school? Or do I spend most of my time on my TPT seller store creating content for you? I would like to hear feedback from the YouTube community about what you would like to see in this tool. What features do you want? What have I not thought of? And if you're part of the pro network, go check out the Saturday staff room Zoom chat number 65, because we were bouncing around ideas of what kind of features we would want and some of the obstacles there are in terms of bringing this product to market. One of the obstacles is cost. I would love to publish this resource for free, but the reality is, I'm not a charity and neither are you. That's one of the first difficulties of becoming a teacherpreneur. As teachers, we share stuff with our colleagues all the time. So then it feels a little bit odd to have to ask other teachers to pay for your resources. What I've learned from Alex Harmozy is the value proposition. If the value of your resource is so much higher than the price that you're asking for, then it's a no brainer for them to buy it. So then they're happy because they get a great resource that they didn't have to make 
and you're happy because you got a price that you wanted. We have a little bit of imposter syndrome to overcome, which is we feel bad asking for money for our resources. But the reality is you as a teacher, you're allowed to earn a living. And TPT provides a marketplace where people who have resources to sell can meet people who are trying to buy those resources. And I believe if you are so good, they can't ignore you. And eventually that's how you crack the code to success. I have a hard time with this, but I have to accept that I'm not a charity. And it's okay for me to ask a price. Although I'm not a charity, I am a social enterprise. I'm not a regular business. So in business, the goal is to maximize profits. If you're a social enterprise, the goal is to maximize profits while maximizing the benefits to society. And I think some TPT sellers are confused about my business model. When I first launched the free data tool, both the free version and the advanced version were completely free. It's not like you downloaded the free version from TPT and then if you wanted the full version with all the bells and whistles, you would have to buy the advanced version. That might be how other TPT seller coaches do it, but I'm not using the premium model. The advanced version is completely free too. All you have to do is sign up for the SEOTpreneur newsletter. So I still wanna make the communities I'm part of better. And I'm trying to do that with the free data tool. The problem is, as I explained in masterclass number five, we can have the CSV file, but if you don't know how to use that CSV file, you don't know what to improve. At the time I launched the free TPT data tool back in October, 2023, there were only very expensive data tools out there to help TPT sellers understand what's in that product stat CSV. And I think it's a mistake for TPT not to provide high quality TPT data analytics. I believe in that idea that a rising tide helps all boats in the harbor. So this comes back to this idea about innovation. If TPT sellers knew which keywords had high volume and low competition that they could put their personal touch on and create a product, then those TPT sellers can go after those high volume, low competition keywords that are underserved by the current TPT market. And then eventually with innovation comes competition and other people will compete for those keywords. And then TPT sellers will have to think about ways to improve their products so that TPT buyers want them. This is the virtuous cycle of innovation and competition. My goal with that free TPT data tool is to try to level this playing field so that this person in the purple shirt can see the game and the game is a metaphor for what you need to improve in your TPT business. I know of many sellers who have told me that they love the TPT seller tool because it's free and it lets them see which products they need to work on. My favorite review so far is from fifth year because this is the dream. This is exactly what I'm hoping for. I've been using this tool since January 2024 when I discovered Mike's YouTube channel. I'll admit that at first it was overwhelming. I love that fifth gear said that because it is overwhelming and Google Sheets isn't a program that most of us have used yet. Mike gives you a lot of data to interpret, which is great. But here's my favorite part of this review. And thank you so much, fifth gear, for saying this. What I have found to be the most helpful is that I can focus on the areas that are read in my data report and update the areas indicated by that column. This gives me a direction for improving my listings I am no longer just updating randomly. And that's the dream. I think that's an example of someone in this purple shirt where because of that free TPT data tool, they're now able to unlock their product stat CSV tool to understand what to fix, which helps increase earnings, yes, but if the earnings are going up, it's because that they are providing a service to teacher buyers. If the products work good, then very quickly they would get negative reviews and then negative reviews would start a negative snowball where people wouldn't buy that resource because look, it has negative reviews. So I've heard from a number of TPT sellers who have been able to watch the YouTube videos and improve their stores. Back in October, 2023, when I put out this video about should I be blackballed by the TPT seller community, I pointed out that even if I put out that free seller tool, there will still be people in this purple shirt who can't use the free seller tool. So then it's frustrating because they don't know what to fix to improve their TPT businesses. So to help the person in this purple shirt who's not able to get the most out of the free data tool, I'm now running workshops. If you go to seotpreneur.com and if you click on workshops, 
It's called the Get Ready for Summer TPT Data Workshop. And by the end of the workshop, you will know exactly which products to work on this summer to get ready for the back to school spike in sales. Now, I am so confident in the ability of this TPT data tool to help TPT sellers. I'm giving a 100% satisfaction guarantee. I call it the, if you don't discover new insights about your TPT products, you get your money back. Isn't that crazy? Over the past six months, I've been having nonstop conversations with TPT sellers. And every single time I use the simple tool or the advanced tool with their data, we can figure out things to work on. So this workshop is to help the people here who don't know how to use the free seller tool. But it's also to help the people in the purple shirt here who are able to use the free seller tool and to unlock even more of the hidden features in there. Originally, I had a little bit of imposter syndrome charging for this workshop because I received an email from a TPT seller and they said that they had a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth because I was charging for training, which this TPT seller thought should be free because I wasn't doing a good enough job in the YouTube videos. And I agree, not everyone's gonna be able to learn from those videos. You have to figure out which video to watch. And I make a lot of videos, so it's hard to know which videos you've missed. And even if you find the right video, the free TPT data tool keeps on improving so you don't know if you're watching the right video because there are more features and you have to figure out what's changed. I talk quickly. So you have to slow down the video on YouTube and not everyone knows that you can slow down the video. And even if you find the right video and you slow down the speed, the videos are stream of thought entertainment. I'm not using a script. It's not a classroom lesson. Plus you can only ask questions on YouTube and Mike doesn't always respond right away. And so then we start to get frustrated because we see what's possible, but the videos aren't working for us as a teaching medium. So I understand why this person in the purple shirt on the left-hand side would feel frustrated. And I can understand why it would leave a bad taste in their mouth because I thought this was supposed to be free. But creating this landing page on my TPT blog made me stop and reflect on my imposter syndrome. I do SEO and digital marketing and coaching for brick and mortar stores, not just TPT sellers. If you wanted one-to-one -one coaching with me right now, my rate is $300 per hour. So that's why a workshop is a way better solution for most TPT sellers. Because instead of one-to-one -one coaching, it's one-to-few coaching. And it's better than YouTube because YouTube is one-to-many coaching. So for TPT sellers who are just finding me, or for TPT sellers who have, who've tried to use that free tool, but they don't know how to use it, I have a workshop for them. And for TPT sellers who are able to use the data locker and the advanced TPT data tool, I have a course for them. It's the Advanced Customer Behavior Course. I bet you there are features in that Google Sheet tool that you haven't discovered yet. So by thinking about my imposter syndrome and sort of looking at the facts, it helped me realize that I'm not a charity. I'm a social enterprise. My goal is to maximize profits and maximize benefit to society. And it's okay for me to try to maximize profits. Maximizing profits doesn't mean that I'm not maximizing my benefit to the TPT SEO community, which makes me wonder what kind of imposter syndrome are you facing? So the big one that I've come across with TPT sellers that I chat with is who am I to ask for more money for this resource. And we can actually answer that with the TPT data tool, right? We can look at your sold rate. And in fact, in the extreme TPT product stats version, we can look at your sold rate based, based on the last 28 days or the last week. And if your sold rate is high, you might consider raising the price. And I know you won't feel comfortable raising the price because you're gonna think, who am I to ask for money? But the answer is, well, people are buying it. So clearly you've communicated the value of your resource and the value is above the price you're asking for. Remember the value proposition, as long as the value you provide or the perceived value is higher than the cost that you're asking for, then it's still a no brainer to get your product. Imposter syndrome's tough. If you have imposter syndrome, I'd love to hear about it if you're comfortable sharing a comment. One of the great things about innovation is that it leads to competition. That's good from the buyer's perspective because it means that companies are improving their products, coming up with better ways to do it, which tends to drive down the cost of things or tends to increase the value of the resource. But what I love about TPT is really it's a lesson in, in emotional intelligence, social emotional learning. Because if you're the competitor, it's hard not to feel threatened or grumpy by your competition who's innovating. 
And I've chatted with TPT sellers who are doing well and they feel frustrated because the new competition is coming up with the same resource but 10 times as many pages for a fraction of the cost. And you just can't compete with that, is what they were saying. Maybe not. Maybe there are ways that you can innovate your process or maybe there are ways you can innovate how you differentiate yourself from the competition. I've read every single book that I've created a resource for. So you know that my answer key is legit because I actually use this in the classroom. There's all sorts of things that you can communicate in your product description that increases the value of your resource. If we're talking about innovation and competition, I get emails asking if I have an opinion about these expensive data tools or how these expensive data tools compare with the free seller tool. And I think both options help TPT sellers understand what to improve. I've never used any other TPT seller coach product. All of my opinions come from publicly accessible websites and conversations with people who have tried some of those products, but I've never personally used them. Recently, someone emailed me and to paraphrase them, they asked for an opinion about another product versus M-I-K-E. And I thought that was hilarious. So if you go to seotpreneur.com and click on workshops, if you scroll down, here's a comparison between trying to improve your TPT business without TPT data tools or with using other TPT data tools or with using the free TPT data tools that I've published on a freesellertool.com. So I'll let you read that page yourself and leave a comment with what you think I got right or what you think I'm missing. But this isn't really a conversation about other TPT data tools and MIKE because we're really addressing different markets. This is really a conversation about innovation and team TPT. Because if you watch masterclass number five, the question is, well, what would happen if IXL improved the TPT seller dashboard? And I would argue that makes it better for everyone. A rising tide lifts all boats in the harbor. This is a conversation about innovation. So if you think TPT should offer some of the resources that I'm making in Google Sheets, please email them at support at teacherspayteachers.com and include a link to this video. They're gonna ask you to clarify what you're looking for. So why not start with this? The ability to type in a keyword and have TPT suggest other keywords that we could try and tell us how much competition there is and how many reviews there are. Let's bring it back to this high volume, low competition TPT keyword tool that I'm creating right now. I'm gonna show you a real world example of me using this tool. I'm going to change some of my social emotional learning resources and rebrand them for the end of year season. As you watch this section, think about, well, yeah, that's cool. I want this tool and I also want it to do this. Let me know what features you think I should add. I'm also curious to hear your ideas about how much I should charge for this because there's an opportunity cost. Creating a tool to share with other TPT sellers means I'm not working on my TPT store. It means I'm not doing other things. I'm not helping small business clients. I'm at the stage of the game where I have to figure out, do I focus on my brick and mortar clients? Do I focus on TPT sellers? Do I focus on my TPT store? So many possibilities. Let me know in the comments what you think. I want to type end of year resources. I want to rank for end of year resources. Now, I would like to see it for all grades and I would like to compare this with middle school. So off the top of my head, it looks like end of the year awards, but that's not what I'm making. I'm making end of year activities. Okay, so I'm going to keep on digging around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these rows. I'm going to go control C to copy them. I have a tracking page. And I'm just going to right click paste special values only. Instead of end of year, what if I put end of year life skills? Okay, so it only shows up twice and it says end of year life skills activities and end of the year life skills. So I'm going to copy those two results. Control C, go to my tracking page and right click paste special values only. I have to put values only because I don't want to copy over the formatting. And if you saw the color shifted. So what this is doing is it's keeping track and comparing the number of competitors for all of the search terms on this page. And the stuff in green is what I should go after. But what if I just go back to life skills? So it's loading up a bunch of resources here. I can see, yeah, maybe middle school, I might be able to rank. I don't want life skills math, life skills curriculum has some possibility, less search volume, but less competition, but it still shows up. Let's copy this over, control C. Now there's a keyboard shortcut. I can go control shift V and that just pastes in things without formatting. So the things that show up in color are the keywords that have lower competition. What if I go end of the year, end of the year activities, 
All right, so I'm going to copy these. Control C, put in my tracking here. Control Shift V. What if I put end of year activities? What do we get? And then I get grade specific stuff. So I don't know if I love that. What if I put life skills activities? One of the challenges is Google Sheets has a built-in rate limiting factor, it's called. It will slow you down from crawling the internet too quickly. And that's just so that it doesn't overload website servers. So that's why you can see it's taking time at saying loading and it'll start to go slower and slower. Then I just have to wait for an hour and then come back. But interesting here, I can see the trending keywords end of year life skills activity shows up in here when I search for life skills activities. All right, I have a bunch of terms in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete ones that don't apply to me. End of the year life awards, that doesn't apply to me. Right click, delete row. Math, no, math doesn't apply to me right now. So I'm going to delete that right now. Life skills curriculum, I'm going to delete this as well. End of the year awards, craft and memory book. That's not what my resource is about. So I'm just going to delete those rows. End of the year fun packet. So here's an example of how this kind of tool can help us find a high volume, low competition keyword. So I looked up end of year fun and it suggested end of year fun packet, end of year fun, end of year fun activities, et cetera, et cetera. So end of year fun has 98,000 competitors, but end of year fun packet has more search volume, but fewer competitors. So if you are being strategic, then you should go after end of year fun packet. My six C's resource isn't a packet, so that's not necessarily the case. But this tells me that if I have other resources that could be a packet, then maybe I should call them end of year fun packet as opposed to end of year fun activities or even worksheets. Worksheets has less search volume than packet and it has more competition. So tell me what you think of this high volume, low competition TPT keyword tool that I'm working on. Do you like it? Is it a waste of my time? What do you think? If you made it this far and you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe. Because in a future video, I'm going to share with you insider information about TPT search. It's insider information in the sense that other people in the TPT community don't know about this. It's insider information from publicly accessible sources of information. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.